Hey everybody, Charles here. Welcome to Backroads Living. In today's video, we're going to be visiting another part of the Appalachian uh, story and that type of thing. I found a poem that I wanted to share with you. Um, and it's in a book that I shared with you uh, earlier on a live feed. The book's called Country Cooking. Right there it is. And uh, it's written by, uh, it says written for lovers of low country cooking. And it's uh, compiled and published by Catherine Wheeler. Now, I'm not familiar with uh, Catherine Wheeler. But uh, I tell you, there's some really good recipes in this book. They're very simple recipes. I'll show it to you again, so in case you want to try to get online and find it. Uh, just a really good book right there. It's got some simple recipes. Things like uh, you can cook right out of your pantry. You don't have to have a lot of fancy uh, ingredients to make these foods. And that's what we like. And especially in the day and time we're living, we need to be able to cook out of our pantries. But uh, on this uh, talk about the Appalachians, I wanted to... Uh, uh, include now let's include the hillbillies in here with this because that's where most of the hillbillies live is in the mountains of the Appalachians and there's going to be a lot of people relate to this poem you don't have to be a hillbilly uh, to relate to this poem there's going to be people all over the United States and uh, all over the world actually uh, that will relate to this because many people were raised as we were here in the Appalachians and uh, it's just, a, it's just a good poem. I really enjoyed it, and, and I'll try not to laugh much through it, and I hope you bear with me. So don't forget to like the video. Uh, if you're new here, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to be notified of new videos as we upload them. And I'm going to try to start doing some uh, uh, videos more like this in the future. So if you like this kind of video, be sure to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when we do upload them. And, and uh, don't forget to share uh, I think your friends and neighbors may enjoy this, and uh, if uh, if you enjoy it, we hope that you share it so others can too. So let's get right on into it. The title of this poem is The Passing of the Back House. So let's get started, and I hope you enjoy it. When memory keeps me company and moves to smiles or tears, a weather-beaten object looms through the midst of years. Behind the house and barn it stood, a half a mile or more, and hurrying feet a path had made straight to its swinging door. Its, its architecture was a type of simple classic art, but in the tragedy of life, it played a leading part. And off the passing traveler drove slow and heaved a sigh to see the modest hired girl slip out with a glance and shy. We had our posy garden that the women loved so well. I loved it too, but better still, I loved the stronger smell that filled the evening breezes so full of homely cheer and told the night or taken tramp that human life was near. On lazy August afternoons, it made a little bower, delightful where my grandsire sat and whiled away an air. For there the summer mornings its very cares entwined, and berry bushes reddened in the steaming soil behind. All day, fat spiders spun their webs to catch the buzzing flies that flittered to and fro from the house where Ma was baking pies. And once a swarm of hornets bold had built a palace there, and stung my unsuspecting aunt, I must not tell you where, then father took a flaming pole. That was a happy day. He nearly burnt the building up, but the hornets left to stay. When summer bloom began to fade and winter to carouse, we banked the little building with a heap of hemlock boughs. But when the crust was on the snow and the sullen skies were gray, in sooth, the building was no place where one would wish to stay. We did our duties promptly. There one purpose swayed the mind. We tarried not, nor lingered long on what we left behind. The torture of that icy seat would make a Spartan sob, for needs must scrape the goose, goose flesh with a lacerating cob. 
that from a frost encrusted nail was suspended by a string. For father was a frugal man. He wasted not a thing. When grandpa had to go out back and make his morning call, we'd bundle up the dear old man with a muffler and a shawl. I knew the hole on which he sat was padded all around. And once I dared to sit there, t'was all too wide I found. My loins were all too little, and I jackknifed there to stay. <laughs> they had to come and get me out, or I'd have passed away. <laughs> then father said ambition was a thing that boys should shun. And I just used the children's hole till childhood days were done. And still I marvel at the craft that cut those holes so true. The baby hole and the slender hole that fitted Sister Sue. That dear old country landmark I've tramped around a bit. And in the lap of luxury, my lot has been to sit. But ere I die, I'll eat the fruit of trees I robbed of yore. Then seek the shanty where my name is carved upon the door. I wean the old familiar smell with soothe my faded soul. I'm now a man, but nonetheless, I'll try the children's hope. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this poem as much as I did. I've probably read this thing 10 times by now, and I thought I would be able to read it through without any kind of uh, laughter or smiles or what have you. And I even practiced doing that before I did, before I read it, but I just can't read the poem without smiles and thinking back over the years of uh, my childhood and when we had a two-seater shanty up on the hill above our home. Uh, being raised in the mountains the way we were, uh, we had no indoor plumbing until I was probably 13 year old. My father had ran a, uh, a pipe from a spring up in the mountains behind the house and he had run it into the kitchen sink and that was our running water. And we bathed in a number three bathtub. Uh, I say bathtub, a wash tub, a big round wash tub. And uh, it, was, uh, it was good times, it was good days. And in those days and times, everybody had an outhouse. They had a back house as it was called here and uh, they were kept away from home far enough to where the odor wouldn't filter down to the house and, and aggravate you any. And in those days, we had what was called a thunder bucket. Now, some of y'all may be familiar with that and some of you may not. Uh, they had different names, but we'll call it a thunder bucket for right now. And we'll talk about that in a different video, but uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you've not subscribed to our channel, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified of our new videos as we upload them. And don't forget to share. Uh, I'm sure that some of your friends and neighbors on your social media account will enjoy this video and uh, maybe bring back many childhood members as well. So God bless you all. We pray that uh, the Lord bless and keep you. We always talk about prepping on our channel, but we always say that to prep your soul first with the Lord Jesus Christ is the most important thing you'll ever do. And then prep, prep, prep your pantries. And folks, keep those memories alive. Uh, the childhood days of your and the back house. We thank you here and we'll see you again in the next video.